from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Well, welcome back here to Las Vegas. We're in the Venetian. The Cube is at Dell EMC World 2017. Uh, good afternoon or good evening if you're watching out on the East Coast or perhaps overseas. Good to have you with us as we continue our coverage here on the Cube. I'm John Walls, along with Keith Townsend, who is the principal at CTO Advisors, and we're joined by Boaz Palgi, who is the uh, vi vice president and GM, and one of the founders of Scale.io. And uh, Boaz, thank you for being with us here on theCUBE. Good to see you. Yeah, my pleasure. For first time, I think, is that correct? No, 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 it's yeah. my fourth time. Oh, fourth, so. first time with me. Yes, so my yes apologies. first time with you, yes. Yeah, my, yes, my yes. apologies. <laughs> we're talking about, talking about your, the history a little bit, and I think it really says something about uh, the growth, the explosion of what you've seen. 14 employees back in 2013. Uh, Dell makes the purchase. Today you have 220 plus working. Uh, so obviously you've had a lot, of, uh, a lot of great growth, a lot of expansion, but a lot of success. Yes, yes. We, we've experienced a lot of growth, not just in the number of people, but also in uh, customers. Uh, and not just in number of customers, but also in the capacity in production with customers. So today we see we have uh, well over 300 large enterprise customers uh, like financial institutions, um, telcos, uh, all kinds of other enterprises, and also on top of that some uh, mid-sized and even small uh, customers. Um, and what we see is that the uh, capacity sizes of our customers have been growing over those four years as well. So if four years ago we had maybe a part of the storage estate in uh, some of our customers, today we have quite a few large enterprises that have completely standardized their entire block storage estate on uh, Scale.io. Um, and maybe one example of that uh, was uh, today in the keynote um, opening of, uh, of uh, this event, uh, Dan Maslowski of uh, Citigroup uh, presented how, uh, how they've been using Scale.io, they're running Scale.io on tens of petabytes uh, today and still growing uh, uh, very, very uh, fast and, uh, and, and, and with a lot more capacity to be added over the next few months and uh, years. So what, what's going on now? I mean, why are customers, I mean, Citigroup being one, um, who's already made the move, but are making the move over to SDS? I mean, what, what's, what's generating that kind of activity and, and what kind of gains do you think they're realizing from that? So I think there are, there are, there are two uh, ways to look at it. So one way is, uh, the one way to look at it is that actually storage arrays uh, where invented 25 or 30 years ago in order to work around a problem of lack of resources for CPU, for processing, for memory in the application servers. So 25, 30 years ago, an application server had barely enough resources to run a single application. And so if people wanted to add another application to manage the, the, the storage, the disk, et cetera, they had to take another server, fill it with disks, and that became the storage server, which is the storage array of today. But nowadays, application servers obviously have ample resources in terms of CPU, memory, network, bandwidth, uh, you can put any media, whether it's flash or magnetic in your servers, uh, um, and so you still have enough resources, and that's exactly where Scaleo uh, comes into uh, play, so we uh, take those, a little part of those resources to actually provide enterprise class uh, storage uh, capabilities as a, in a software form factor alongside the applications or the hypervisors or the databases on those uh, on the same servers. Um, so this is maybe the ena technology enabling the shift uh, uh, in the paradigm that has been uh, happening. On the other hand, when you look at what is possible today, uh, products like Scale.io make operations 
uh, of the data center significantly easier. So if in the past you needed to have dedicated storage products that were actually islands by themselves, you, you couldn't really interoperate between various storage products of various vendors, you needed dedicated storage teams that were specialized on that storage. Every three years, uh, storage estates would come up for refresh, uh, all the competitors would start bidding, uh, you would start getting uh, very uh, expensive and, and, and uh, intrusive data migration projects from the old storage to the new storage. All of that is something of the past when you work with software-defined storage like Scale.io. So Moaz, let's talk about that for a little bit. Wikibon did research and determined that they called this market originally servicing, and some people may call it hyper-converged infrastructure, would overtake traditional storage arrays and sales uh, in the next couple of years. Yes. How you talked about ease of, of use. Let's talk about the de deployment. How is Scale.io consumed? So we see several uh, form factors of uh, Scale.io today. So the, the most obvious one is software. So uh, some of our customers buy Scale.io software, buy the servers of their choice, which might be Dell servers or HP or IBM or any other uh, server uh, vendor out there and they build their own estate. Just like they used to buy servers to run their databases for Oracle, or to, to run the operating system, the hypervisors, et cetera, now they also run the storage as another application really on their uh, servers. Um, so that's one form factor, software. Actually, people, some of our customers today downloaded software from Scale.io from the internet, started to use it, started to grow it, and then, came to uh, em Dell EMC to, to buy the license and to grow it and to put it in production for real. So that's a um, weird, that's a kind of strange statement you said. This is a platform that holds petabytes of storage. Yes. You're telling me customers just downloaded it and installed it. I missed the whole sales process and yes, before we, the download part. <laughs> that's very unusual for EMC. It's unusual for, for, for EMC and especially for, 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 for all vendors really in the storage uh, space, but we, this, is, this is a new world. So Scale.io software is freely downloadable for testing purposes um, and customers find it, download it, and, and we have not a small number of customers that actually came to us that way. Hey, we already, bought, we already used Scale.io, we tested it, we took some servers that we had lying around, we built a cluster, it works, it gives tremendous performance, it's uh, easy to operate, we want to roll it out in production, um, and we understand we need to buy the license for that. So, so this is one uh, form factor. This, the second form factor that we see are appliances. So uh, uh, Scale.io obviously supports the 14G servers of, uh, of Dell, uh, we, we are agnostic really to the underlying uh, hardware, but, but this is uh, uh, one of the Dell server uh, approaches that, that, that we are supporting is to provide appliances based on 14G servers running Scale.io together with hypervisors like ESX or, or Hyper-V or KVM uh, and, uh, and a management software around it that we call AMS that allows customers to manage that entire stack uh, of the server and the scale software and the hypervisor software and the firmware, et cetera, with single clicks configuration, single click upgrade, uh, and pretty soon also single click deployment of virtual machines and uh, storage uh, together. So this is the second uh, form factor, appliances uh, with, uh, with a whole uh, management uh, package for the entire stack uh, um, really wrapping, wrapped around that. Uh, the third um, form factor that we see are the VX rack flex uh, approaches where uh, VCE or C CSPD nowadays are selling entire racks uh, including networking, uh, 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 compute, and, and, and scale uh, uh, storage, and customers can buy these racks, plug them in, and start uh, start running their applications and their uh, their environment uh, out of the box. So it's all about simplicity, right? I mean, yes. by one click, you're talking about 
you know, uh, 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 the combination of force right into the, the, the new structure. So it's all about making it a lot easier. At the end of the day, it's, it's is that solving a big problem? Huge problem. I would say it's simplicity of management, but also simplicity of operations. So in the past, uh, traditional storage estates uh, uh, force people to deal with storage islands. Um, 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 forklift upgrades from old uh, systems to newer systems. When you have an array that's full, you now need to somehow migrate data to another array. Um, there, there are a lot of operational challenges with the traditional approaches that completely disappear just like that when you, when you deploy a software like Scale.io, which completely scales across all these clusters, across all these uh, environments, across bare metal operating systems as well as across multiple types of hypervisors. And you really get one uh, big pool, if you may, of storage that uh, while being a big pool also provides among the best performance in the industry as well. And this is because of our architecture that, that is completely parallelized and it makes it possible to not only aggregate capacity, but also aggregate performance across a large number of devices and nodes. So, curious geek question. When uh, EMC originally bought Scale.io, Chad Sackett did a, uh, I think what he called a face melting demo of using Scale.io in AWS, and he saw crazy, I don't know, it was like a million IOPS or something coming out of AWS, shows the portability of the application. Future of Scale.io, do you see a use case for Scale.io in the cloud? Well, Scale.io in many cases enables the cloud. So we, we see one of our main use cases is infrastructure as a service. And, and this is really private clouds in the enterprise, or managed hosting or public clouds in telcos or, or, or managed service uh, providers' uh, environments. And, and, and this actually represents a very significant part of our, of our deployments. Um, the, another part of our deployments are the traditional enterprise applications like the Oracle and the SQL and, 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 and hypervisors of the world. Uh, and, and then we also see deployments of the newer type of uh, applications like MongoDB, Cassandra, uh, all kinds of OpenStack uh, implementations, et cetera, also on uh, Scale.io. So, I hate to jump ahead, but, but it's always interesting to talk with people such as yourself. We're always kind of thinking ahead. Like, what's the next big headache? Or what's the next big problem that you'd like to tackle, that you'd like to challenge? Uh, that you think that with, with a more polished or more defined storage capability would solve whatever that dilemma might be that's emerging for the uh, enterprise? Well, I, I think the first hurdle we need to pass is, is just the, the, the challenge for most uh, industry veterans in particular to make this shift from the build like a tank traditional storage arrays that you can touch and, 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 and see to, to software that, that has a connotation or a perception of it's just software, I can touch it, I can see it. H how can it be robust? How can it be performant? How can I operate it in an easy manner? As a matter of fact, all of those uh, topics are better with a scalar software than with a traditional enterprise arrays. And we know, we, we've built some of them in the past, but in Scale.io, you get the, the, the most uh, advanced uh, benefits in terms of operational ease, elasticity, uh, scalability, uh, performance, flexibility of deployment, um, um, uh, readiness for the future. So, uh, uh, agnosticity to the underlying hardware, underlying media, um, and so, this really makes the data center a lot easier to, to be operated and also uh, a lot uh, lower cost because you eliminate a lot of the complexity, you eliminate a lot of the uh, smaller vendors that uh, only deliver a small part of your hardware estate because now you, as a customer, can really leverage everything on your x86 hardware, and this is commodity par excellence. You can go out there, you can, you can get 
server vendors to bid for the uh, hardware estate that you, uh, that you want to run, and, and on that estate you can run your applications, your databases, your scale your software, whatever you need. So you're telling them you can touch it, or you, you don't have to touch it, you don't have to feel it, trust me, it's real, right? right. Well, it's software, don't but it's trust me, try it. Try it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. yes. so, uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, we appreciate the time here on theCUBE, and uh, good seeing you. Again, fourth time around, uh, yes. You're about to join the five-time alumni club, so congratulations Soon, on that. Yes, yes, Good yes. Deal. Can I, by the way, uh, tell you a little bit about the version, the new version? Oh, please, we yeah, we have a new back. So sure. maybe, uh, very quickly, end of this year, we are releasing a version, uh, a new version of Scalio, Scalio.next. Uh, the main uh, items there are we are delivering space efficiency. Uh, um, but we provide it in a dynamic manner. So one of the big downsides of uh, putting space efficiency in storage systems is that it usually hits performance quite significantly, and especially if the data is not too compressible. Um, in Scale.io, we will dynamically compress data based on the compressibility of the data. So if data is not compressible, we won't waste resources trying to compress it. If data is very compressible, we will use more resources, but we will also compress it, and we, we will be able to do that with a very little, very small uh, degradation of performance compared to the non-compressed environment. Uh, that's one. Two, we uh, introduce volume migration in a non-disruptive manner, enabling customers to move volumes from flash only to magnetic only to hybrid uh, environments on the fly without any disruption to the uh, ongoing applications. Uh, we introduced a support for vivos in order to uh, be able to run all the Scale.io capabilities, all the Scale.io volume capabilities on a virtual machine granularity uh, level uh, in ESX. Um, and uh, we are also introducing the next uh, uh, level of uh, the AMS uh, management uh, software, which is the wrapper around the uh, server with uh, Scale.io software appliance bundles that and enables you to manage the entire stack. And timing again? End of this year, end, end of, of 17. Good, good deal. Uh, you got a full plate, don't you? We do, we yeah, do. Very good, uh, well done. Uh, well, thank, thank you again, and sorry about that. I know you had news you wanted to get in, I'm glad you did. Well, thank, thank you, you for the opportunity. You bet, all right. Back with more on theCUBE here from Dell EMC World 2017, right after this.